Hello and welcome to Doing Business in Rwanda with me, Michael Mjisha. Now, earlier 2016, Rwanda made over $404 million from the tourism sector, much of which was a contribution from the Gorilla Trekking Permits, which contributed over to 92% of the revenues collected. Today, we are at the 13th annual Kwitizina ceremony, where we intend to find out on how much conservation is helping boost the tourism sector and also giving back to the community. This is doing business in Rwanda. Mountain gorillas are an endangered species with only about 880 remaining in the world. It is now Rwanda's task to conserve the gorillas and take care of their habitat. This is what uh, Rwanda has and this is a natural treasure. Having the gorillas here is not, should be not only cherished, protected, but conserved in a way to, to, to bring additional people because at the end giving the, a stick in the local communities, in having a protection, in having a sustainability, in showing that look the, the, the gorillas are here, they're helping me bring in revenues to help me send my children to school, to help me have, it, have a better life, and it's all because of the industry surrounding the viewing of the gorillas. So at the end, it's all about having a better life, it's, it's having a more sustainable lifestyle, it's, having fighting, it's about fighting poverty, and it's about fighting poverty in a sustainable manner. So um, conservation is what it's all about. As well as uh, supporting the development for, for the African uh nations and people. It needs to come in conjunction. It doesn't mean that wildlife is going to suffer and people of Africa will be super happy and it doesn't have to be that wildlife is going to be protected and people of Africa will suffer, you know. I think it's a beautiful symbiosis um, and we should, we should learn how to do that and you know I think only Africans can really protect their own heritage and their own valuable assets as wildlife and wildlands. Um, it has turned out to be a huge profit for Western countries to have parks where tourists can go and visit and enjoy the nature, enjoy seeing wildlife. I don't see why it shouldn't be the case for Africa. Rwanda's initiative to engage our youth in finding solutions to preserve ecosystems is set to see creation of a safer livelihood for the gorillas and much more development in the Ibirunga region for future generations. My generation and those to come, it is important for us to be a part of the conservation efforts because we are the people that will be, you know, leading the country in, um, you know, living in the world to come and we want to make sure that we are part of the efforts that make sure we have a world that will endure for many generations to come. Uh, like you saw, we had a large youth group today uh, that put a lot of effort in creating a very exhilarating performance that showed the love and appreciation for the mountain gorilla. So this year, more than any year before, I, I think we have really increased our efforts and the government is really doing its best to include the youth in the efforts. Non-profit organizations like Africa Wildlife Foundation are working closely with policymakers to create better and necessary legal frameworks. This in turn helped with the development of the conservation and tourism sector that would entail more growth for the community and the environmental biodiversity under the land and habitat protection. I think tourism and conservation is right now in a prime time and also due to the fact that a lot of foreign investments um, are influencing certain developments that are not necessarily sustainable but necessary for the people. So it's a, for African Wildlife Foundation it's important to be some sort of a guide within for this for, for individual states uh, help understand okay this land is very important for the migration for for instance for elephants let's make sure that we do not destroy that path for those elephants to naturally migrate how about we allocate a different location for whatever the business um, might be um, and that's where we stand on on making sure that we protect the natural habitat of the wildlife as well as uh, supporting the development for, for the African uh, nations and people. 
the conservation efforts have brought to the attention of many foreigners and tourists, uh, Rwanda and our community. Obviously with this comes lots of lodges and new uh, businesses surrounding and centered on the conservation efforts. These uh, bring up opportunities for the locals in Musanze and Basate and so on. Uh, it gives them job opportunities and of course brings in that revenue, uh, that money that uh, these locals need and very much appreciate. It's not just the jobs that the Musanza locals get. There are new roads built to promote tourism. This have done great in connecting the region, adding value and also easing transportation for our agricultural produce to the markets. It was quite harder before, since we had to carry the potatoes from the mountains all the way to Musanze town. But today, the trucks find the harvest in the farms. Well, it's not just the government that's realized the benefits of conservation, but the private sector is also taking up on the road to create business opportunities leveraging tourism, with entrance of lodges like the Amakoro Lodge, Bisate Lodge, Sabino, and many others that in turn have seen jobs created for the locals. If you look at the national park, you'll see that there's a whole buffalo wall that was actually built by the community. If you look at some of the hotels here, uh, you've had all the more than just around the park here. There's more than 15 lodges and hotels that are here. All the employment that is within those parks, the food that is uh, the hotels and the lodges, the food that is actually distributed. If you give an example here, the staff that work here, they're from the community. They're not only getting money, but there is a skills transfer. Uh, then when you come to uh, the people who work in the park, most of the people here are people that were born here that are actually working in the park. Beyond that, other than the guides, we've got the porters that help the tourists move up. Uh, so it's a whole value chain that is related to that. As motorists, we do many trips with travelers during the preparations of the Kwitizina ceremony, which gives us a lot of money that we can make on any other day. The locals from Kinigi are also excited about it. For one, they get both permanent and short-time jobs from tourism activities that help them live financially stable lives. Another thing we've realized is the completion of schools and hospitals up in the volcanoes by RDP. This has contributed so much to the development of the region and has acted as awareness on the benefits of conserving the gorillas to the locals. More of the local population wants to be part of development. However, a recurrent impediment has been the limited opportunities presented. Um, as much as I'm a social entrepreneur, but I'm also a huge conservationist. And one of the things that while I say tourism for conservation, but I'm also a strong believer that if you leave out the community, you cannot talk about sustainable tourism. Or of the community, we cannot separate that. And it has to be a deliberate strategy. And that's why here at Amakoro, it's important for me to make sure that the people employed here, first of all, among all the staff, only one is a foreigner. Yeah. And there's going to be a skills transfer in the kitchen to ensure that we have a local person. The next philosophy is that the people who work here are the first to get employment. And out of the 20 people that work here, only three are not from this region. So. We as entrepreneurs and me as an entrepreneur here, it is the mindfulness of knowing that the food that we are cooking here has to be from here. The people we employ are from here. That is what will mean sustainable tourism and, and protecting our environment and ultimately having a better world. Every individual that goes gorilla trekking has a story to share on how different it was from how they perceived it before. These stories had something to say on their experience. The way it works now, yeah, the more money you can get and pump back into the community, save the gorillas and hopefully expand the population is, is only a good thing. It's a great program, there's a lot of passion again in the community and um, yeah, it's, it was just a really awe-inspiring day. I think what was really interesting is that you can see that, uh, what us in them and the way they behave, the way they mimic our kind of you know, expressions and, and habits and various things. 
it's it really was so surreal. It's awesome that that money goes back in, like pretty much all of that money goes back into the conservation. Um, you know preserving the gorillas and their way of life and protecting them and also uh, the communities around it uh, creating jobs and um, yeah more more tourism is what's going to help do all that uh, and so I don't think money's really an object when it comes to it especially for that kind of experience what you take away from it the enlightenment and um, everything like that it's just, it's just amazing like it's worth every every cent. It's just so welcoming and you know as a tourist it makes you feel um, really welcomed and really like happy to be there and you don't mind spending the money in the shop or you know buying gifts and things even though you know they could be made from paper you don't mind spending five ten dollars on them because you know that money's going to go towards a good cause and looking after the gorillas and the community and I just think that's the main reason we're here and that's why it's so important to us. We saw a lot of like projects and, and schools and, and, and communities that were benefiting from this, um, for example souvenirs and people like that can really like also take some, some, some advantages from tourism. My country also faced some, some challenges with that. It's not easy but it's really important to have like if you have tourism you should have sustainability and to have conservation like in the same in the same place. Yeah. Over 85 percent of the population living near the volcanoes in Rwanda, Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo make a living carrying out agricultural activities on the land. This has been raised as an issue for both the gorillas' lives and the habitat. Well, we were talking about loss of habitat uh, for the wildlife and in some countries in Africa, uh, the land reform needs to happen. Uh, it's, people are suffering, people are in danger in harm's way because you have a lot of cattle that wants to go through land and, and eat and yet you also want to um, identify and protect the, the identified areas for the wildlife. So Kenya is, a, is, a, is an example of that. Um, I would like to think that one day isn't the case, but Kenya has a huge problem with that. Zimbabwe to some, some degree. And yeah, I think land reform is something that needs to happen. I am all for development. I'm all for, you know, rise of agriculture. But if there is not that pan-African approach to it, um, we will, the wildlife and conservation will see some crisis and uh, so will the private landowners. It's conservation because there is a market, there is an industry for viewing gorillas, there is people that want to come and see it, and the industries around it, the connects industries, for example, the hotels, the shops, you know, printing t-shirts, having people come, having people you know, have a coffee, it all develops the industry around it. And it's all about having the gorillas in the first place in order for that to happen. So uh, it makes sense for governance, it makes sense for the communities, and it makes sense for, for, for the gorillas themselves in order to, to have a situation where there is a, a better tomorrow for everybody. So everybody has skin in the game, everybody needs to participate, everybody needs to show that look, this is for the good for, and for the benefit of everybody. For, for humankind, having the, the gorillas being here in a sustainable way, prevent extinction, it, it guarantees also that our children will get to see the silverbacks. Otherwise, if they're poached, if they're hunted, if they're killed, what's in it tomorrow? It was a day full of celebrations here in Musanza district as thousands and thousands of people showed up for the 13th annual Kwitizina ceremony where 19 baby gorillas were named. Now most of the conversation here were around conservation as the only and better way to move forward with the sustainable tourism in the country. But we also came to see the story on how much the tourism sector is helping the local residents develop. That's where we'll leave it on this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. Now, if you have any feedback, be kind enough to send it on dbir at abn360.com or even better, tweet us at dbirwanda. From the entire Doing Business in Rwanda team, thank you very much for watching.